The Tesla Model Y has been an incredibly great selling car. Reports are even saying it's the number one selling car in the world right now. It's certainly been doing very well in the UK and it's looking very promising for 2023 as well. Most of those cars have been the long range version, but now there are two other versions of the Model Y to choose from. The standard range rear wheel drive version and this, the really fast performance version. It's quick, really quick. But the question is, do you really need an SUV that fast? Before we answer that question though, Please don't forget, if you enjoy this video, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will barely be able to tell the difference between a rear wheel drive Model Y and the long range version from most angles. But the performance version is a bit more obvious, with this red line under dual motor and the carbon fiber spoiler at the back. It's also been lowered a little compared to the other two models and comes with these exclusive 21 inch Uber turbine wheels. The looks of the Model Y are definitely a matter of taste, like the Model 3. There was clearly a lot of wind tunnel input here. With this red paint, we think the Model Y is rather striking. That's a 2,100 pound extra though, and the basic color is white. Black, gray, and blue are all 1,100 pounds. That's about it for options on the Model Y, apart from two different interior choices. There is a seven seater version available in America, but that still hasn't come to Europe yet. That has two seats facing backwards. We do kind of wish that they would bring that over here as well. Once you set up your Tesla, the typical mode of entry is using your phone as the key, but since this is a press car, I'm gonna to have to use the default method, which is a key card, which opens the car like this. Let's have a look inside. Like the three and otherwise, the performance version has two interior choices. This black one is the basic option, while a white and black version is 1,100 pounds extra. We still find this strip of wood veneer an acquired taste, but the matte finish is a distinct improvement over the previous Model 3 generation's glossy piano black. Unlike most things Tesla, the seats can be adjusted electronically with separate buttons. You can actually store presets, but that is via the central touchscreen, and you can even link those to key cards and specific users as well. These seats are pretty comfortable for a long journey and there's more headroom than you would get in a Model 3. Like all current Model 3s and Model Ys, you get these two wireless phone chargers in the front, which is a pretty unique feature. You also get these two cubbies. There's, there's one under here, which is now under a kind of um, pneumatic door. Then there's this space here as well. And these two cup holders, they are a bit small for some kinds of uh, cups, but um, pretty decent sized. And hidden underneath here is a glove compartment, which there isn't a separate button for, so you have to, best easiest way to do it is to press the, uh, the right button and say, open glove compartment. Are you sure about that? Because... It's a reasonable size, but you know, maybe, maybe a bit slim. So you, you could fit a few pairs of gloves in there. The rear of this car though, is where you really tell the difference between the Model 3. There's a lot more knee room and a lot more headroom than that, that car. This is a much better place for adults to sit in the back. The standard panoramic sunroof adds to that sense of space in the rear. These rear seats are also heated, however, you can only control those from the front console. Rear seat passengers do have their own air vents and a couple of USB-C ports, but this isn't a tri-zone air conditioning system. This middle rear seat is quite comfortable and because of the flat floor, it's probably better than some cars, but if you don't have a middle passenger, you can drop this down, you've got a couple of cup holders and a nice tasty armrest as well. And of course, there are seat back pockets for your kids to keep their copies of the rise and fall of Twitter or whatever it is kids read these days. Tesla interiors aren't up to the standard of German cars or even a challenger brands like Genesis, but if you do like a minimalist approach, it's pretty comfortable. Probably the main reason you'd buy this car over a Model 3, however, is that the Model 3 isn't a hatchback, and this is. Now, it doesn't have a kick release, which is maybe a bit of an aberration uh, considering the price of the car, but you do get a powered boot release. And you can see there's plenty of space inside here, and the cars, I don't think they originally came with this, but there's now this, this kind of, um, slightly dubiously designed um, uh, cover that goes over the top. This space is 854 litres. You can see you've got all the things we need for a weekend away and still plenty of room up front. Massive amounts of space. Of course, there is quite a lot of extra space underneath the boot floor here. You could really put a couple of extra overnight bags in there as well. Of course, if you want more boot space, you can let the rear seats down and they automatically go down and um, Got a 60-40 split here. So this is now 1,869 litres, which is the kind of space that you'd get from an E-Class Mercedes estate, which is really top of the range in terms of boot space. Now, unlike the Model 3, the performance version of the Model Y can also tow, and it can tow a lot. This car can tow 1,600 kilograms with the 1,090 quid 
uh, tow bar option. That means you could probably tow a decently sized caravan or a boat with this car. There's also a sizable frunk on this car. This is 117 litres. Again, enough for an overnight bag. So overall, this is a, a class leading amount of luggage space and definitely one of the reasons why you'd opt for this car. Alongside speed, Tesla's other usual party trick is range. The Model Y, however, wasn't quite top of the class when it arrived. However, the figures have improved since launch. The long range now offers 331 miles and the new rear wheel drive one, 283 miles, which is still pretty decent. However, this performance model offers 319 miles, which is again, perfectly adequate for a long journey. Officially, that's from a 75 kilowatt hour battery, meaning 4.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, during my driving testing of this car, I was getting more like 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour, which is still decent, which will mean you'll get about 250 miles on a full charge. We're shooting this video at Darts Farm, which is quite a famous uh, charging spot for Teslas. And in my drive around Devon, I've been getting a consistent 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So you know, this, is, this is definitely a car you can do long range in. If you can find the 250 kilowatt Tesla superchargers, or you can maybe go to an iron anti charger, you're only going to take about 25 minutes to go from 20 to 80 percent. With AC charging, this car does support 11 kilowatts, but obviously, most homes have uh, 7 kilowatts, so it takes about 12 hours to take, go from 0 to 100 percent. Of course, the controversy about the Model 3 and the Model Y is how much focus there is on just this 15 inch panel. Now, they have improved things a bit, and um, there are a few more things that the, you can do with these multifunction wheels, but it is still a car that will dis be disliked by people who enjoy separate buttons for things. So one thing that Tesla has changed is that now if you press this button and go for the windscreen wipers, you can actually toggle them with this wheel and go backwards and forwards and set them to go from one, two, three, four speed or to auto, which was a big problem with the, with the uh, windscreen wipers on the car before because it doesn't have a separate stalk for windscreen wipers. However, as with all Teslas, starting this thing up is really easy, particularly if you've got the, the uh, the phone key set up. The phone's in your pocket, you just press the brake pedal and the car will start. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to press the key card here and press the brake pedal. So like recent automatic Mercedes, this uh, lever on the right-hand side, up for reverse and there's neutral drive. And there's also, if you pull it down once, you get regular adaptive cruise control and a second pull down will give you the uh, autopilot, which we'll talk about when we're actually driving the car. Generally speaking, this left-hand wheel is uh, used for media controls but as i said it has now added extra functionality where you can control for example the windscreen wipers you can add different functions to that as well this right hand one is primarily used for the uh, autopilot functions and cruise control however if you press it you get the voice controls which have been improved recently because they've now added british english now the more recent Model 3s and Model Ys also have a heated steering wheel as well as heated seats, but you'll see that all the air conditioning functions are controlled with this. Um, it's not a bad system, but it's really hard to use beyond just temperature control when you're driving. So that brings us to kind of the main revolution with this car is how focused it is on this central screen. This is a well laid out screen and they do add significant functions with every uh, update. It's a nicely laid out system. You've got, you know, you can adjust the controls for here. You can choose different styles of driving, steering mode, different acceleration modes. Um, there's, a, you know, there's a stopping mode where you creep or that's an auto hold function. Charging here, um, you can choose how, how much you charge the car up to. Um, this car has FSD, full self-driving, so you has more functions, but you can choose all the settings for that here. Uh, choose how the locks operate, choose how the lights operate. Um, this has somehow had the dome lights turned off. Um, now, a new function here, which I'm not going to um, go into here, is um, uh, that you can change the display to large text size. Now, if you've got really poor eyesight like me, that's a godsend um, because it makes a lot of the text much more visible, um, particularly at night time. Trip meter stuff about navigation, safety functions that you can toggle here, service information, you can see that the tires are fully inflated, and of course, those beloved software updates, because yes, this car, once you've uh, got into the swing of things, will probably be getting an update every couple of weeks, sometimes with really cool new features. So another thing that Tesla has that's pretty unique, and we're showing it here in a Model 3, is all the entertainment functions. There's two things to this, you can go into theater mode, 
and you'll have a, a Netflix, Disney Plus, YouTube, you can watch videos while you're charging, although obviously this card doesn't take that long to charge, so you can maybe watch half an hour of programming while you're charging. The other thing that you can do is play games, and there's, this is constantly being added to. In arcade mode, you've got all these games that you can play. You can play um, lots of different things, even, even race using your steering wheel to control, or uh, you can actually attach a controller to it as well. Teslas are infamous for their speed, and this is the performance version of the Model Y. It's not as quick as the Model 3 performance, but 3.5 seconds to 60 miles per hour will still give an Aston Martin a run for its money. This car can zip through overtaking moves. It's honestly a bit bonkers for an SUV, and with the low centre of gravity with those batteries under the floor pan, the cornering is really excellent for a, such a tall car. However, although the ride quality is a bit better than the Model 3 performance, it's still not the smoothest around. The Model Y glides along on smooth roads, but bumps are evident on less well-paved roads. It's very well poised on motorways and fantastic on Bendy A roads. The Model 3 performance is more fun, but the wide variant is still great to drive. The Model Y has a five-star end cap rating, and a large part of that is the safety tech. Like all other new Teslas, the Model Y has blind spot detection, collision warning, and emergency braking. The front camera can be used as a dash cam, and when you hit the horn, it will record something, but you do need to have a USB drive installed in the USB port in the glove box. You can also turn on sentry mode, which will actually record video from all the cameras all around the car if it detects some kind of nuisance being caused to the car. You can even watch these remotely through the app, which is pretty amazing. So you can park this car up somewhere and remotely just take a quick look at the surroundings. Really cool feature. Now we come to autopilot, which, which is standard on all Teslas. You just pull the stick down once to get regular cruise control and then a second time to get autopilot with uh, steering. So you can see it's actually steering me around this corner now. And then you set the, uh, the speed with the wheel and you can also set the distance by moving the wheel left and right. Um, there has been some controversy about autopilot in the news, um, but certainly from my experience, it's a very capable system and takes a lot of the pain out of traffic jams and average speed zones. Um, and I'm just driving down a regular dual carriageway here and it's, it's taking care of the driving for me. Personally, I prefer to just drive this myself, but if you want to have a relaxing trip, all you need to do is just jiggle the wheel occasionally to tell it that you're actually paying attention still. As you'll probably know, Tesla has been beta testing full self-driving in city streets as well in the USA and we've also heard that they've just started beta testing it in Australia too. Now the full self-driving feature of this car isn't really worth the £6,800 that it costs in the UK. You're better off going for the enhanced autopilot which includes many of the same features. In fact at the time being you won't really lose any features that you actually want and can use by going for enhanced autopilot rather than full self-driving if you buy that in the UK. So you do get navigate on autopilot which will do things like um, automatically let change lanes when you hit the indicator. You also get auto parking which I've found doesn't really do a very good job on narrow British streets because uh, it, it will park you uh, way too far away from the curb and this is a pretty wide car to start with. A feature you really might like to have though is Summon and Smart Summon. Summon in particular, if you have a narrow garage and it's very hard to get in and out of the car, you can lead the car in and out of the garage uh, with the app, which uh, is a, a really cool feature if you can get it to work. So the Model Y performance is supremely fast, practical and packed with technology. But Tesla's have never been cheap, even though the prices have gone down a bit recently. This performance model is a tenner under £60,000. That might seem like a lot of money, and on an absolute scale, it is. But compare that to a similarly quick Mercedes or BMW EV, and it actually seems quite reasonable. The Model 3 is a bit cheaper, but this is a more practical family car, with more boot space and more room for people in the back seats. There are some very reasonably priced options from the Volkswagen Group, but they don't have the complete package that the Model Y offers. However, the Model Y long range is seven grand cheaper than this performance version, making it a much better value option. The warranty is decent, but not up to Korean cars. You get four years or 50,000 miles of a basic warranty. However, the battery warranty is very good on this car. You get eight years for 120,000 miles 
and um, <clears throat> that's for 70% capacity. It's no surprise that the Tesla Model Y is selling like hotcakes. It's incredibly practical for passengers and cargo transportation. The technology is typically amazing, as with all Teslas, and this performance Model Y is incredibly quick. You are paying £7,000 extra for this performance version over the long range equivalent, but if you do like driving an SUV that can frighten a Ferrari, the Tesla Model Y performance is absolutely brilliant. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to our YouTube channel.